no matter what you're coding, what project you're working on, or what your development environment even is, I'm thinking it's safe to say that everyone wants to know how to be more productive. So find out some cool trips, tips and tricks on how to do so on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everybody, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I am joined by Mika Dumont, who is a PM on the .NET team. How's it going, Mika? Good, how's it going, Leslie? It's going all right. It's a lovely sunny afternoon in Seattle right now. It is. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so you're a PM on the .NET team, which is such a broad, giant team. .NET is so huge, especially in the Visual Studio world. So can you talk a little bit more about what it is that you do? Yeah, um, so I'm a program manager on the .NET team. And my team, uh, what we try to do is we try to make developers, .NET developers uh, as productive as possible. So whether that's you know different code fixes or refactorings, um, as well as different like code generation and completions and tooling, uh, we just try to you know give you um, all the productivity features in order to uh, supercharge your developer productivity. I love that word, supercharge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of productivity, that's what we're going to be talking about, right? Yeah. And. Cool. Um, Leslie, since uh, you work on the debugger, I thought that I can go ahead and start with our debugger refactoring. And awesome. so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And there we go. And so the uh, very first feature that I wanted to show, again, um, this is brand new. It's a refactoring where you can pin properties pro programmatically in your code by adding this debugger display attribute. Oh, I love that attribute. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And uh, this will also automatically generate a method. And um, its default return is to string. But if I want, I can actually go ahead and have it return uh, the first element of an array. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I already set my breakpoint over here. And I can just debug this test real quick just to show you what this feature does. So you already get 50 bonus points for me for starting your <laughs> yes. demo out with debugger display or just anything debugger related. So <laughs> congratulations. <Cool. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Woohoo. Um, yeah, so here you can see that um, the first value um, is a zero index of the array, which is this little dog emoji. And so without having to go ahead and manually, you know, pin these properties um, using the debugger UI, I can just, you know, programmatically do that in my code. That's cool. So just yeah. Neat refactoring. That's neat. Yeah, because now you can do it, you can have it both ways. So if you like debugger display as an attribute and you want to get crazy complex with it, then you can use that. Except now you can access that feature a lot better, it seems. Like I love that you made that a refactoring option. And uh, conversely, if you like debugging and you just like playing around in the watch window, then you can use that pin icon that Mika just explored. Yeah, exactly. And um, the next one, I just, since we're here, um, you might notice that we have a couple of these regular string literals. And it's, oh boy. I don't know, Leslie, yeah, it's kind of hard to parse what this is saying, right? Um, yeah. How do you even know what to type in for that? <laughs> so, exactly. So, we actually have a refactoring now where you can actually convert this to a verbatim string. So, it makes it a bit more legible. And uh, if I want, I can also uh, convert it back to a regular string. So oh, that's just a neat new refactoring that we just added. That's really nice. Yeah, because sometimes, yeah. you know, I might add an extra n or something or an extra backslash, and I don't know if it's actually going to work until I print it out or it goes wherever the string needs to be. Yeah, so, so now you can just easily see what you're typing and just right. switch around. <laughs> Instead of having to process it every time you go past <laughs> that line, good grief. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, while we're here, uh, I do want to show you this one too. Um, so I'm going to uncomment this. So the keyboard shortcut for uh, toggle block comments is control shift forward slash. And uh, just want to point that out. <laughs> and so here you might notice that I'm getting an error. And if I hover over this error, quick info is letting me know that um, this expression cannot be implicitly cast. 
And uh, luckily, we have a code fix to add an explicit cast. So, oh my. Woo -woo. Yay, yeah. that's so exciting. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. So, like, I don't know if you're like familiar with like just having to like go and like hover over to learn what the type was declared as. Um, this will just go ahead and, you know, serve that right up uh, for you. That's so, that's what's so cool about refactoring tips like that. It's just like they're small but mighty quality of life improvements to me that just make my life yeah. easier. Yeah, it's just the little things, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what else? And I do want to point out, um, you know, hopefully you're pretty familiar or the aud audience is pretty familiar with uh, this, you know, light bulb. Uh, icon and so this light bulb represents quick actions and quick actions allows you to easily refactor generate or modify code with a single action and uh, I can go ahead and invoke this by either selecting the light bulb icon or I can just you know type control period or alt enter and it'll also invoke it and uh, this you know Latest refactoring that we have is converting a switch statement to the new C sharp eight switch expression, and so this will just go ahead and you know provide a more look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's like magic exactly, and so this will just go ahead and you know provide a more concise syntax without having to like write out the returns um, in each case. Right. <laughs> Sweet, saves you a lot of trouble. Yeah. And it also just helps you learn about, you know, new C sharp language features too. So it's pretty cool. And uh, I don't know if you notice all of these XML comments over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun to write whenever you need to explain what a given class or method does. Yeah, and um, we actually now have a quick info style support for XML comments. So if I go ahead and hover over this class, you will notice that quick info will display uh, italics, bullets, numbers, bold, and a clickable link. Oh. So it's really cool. <laughs> and uh, while I'm talking about XML comments, um, over here you can see that this dog card is inheriting from this animal card class. And let's see, if I go ahead and add this inherit doc tag, um, you will see that um, dog card now will inherit from the, you know, from its like from different base classes or interfaces. Just depends like where you want to add that inherit doc tag. And so this just eliminates, you know, the unwanted copying and pasting of duplicate XML comments and it will automatically keep your XML comments synchronized. So yeah, that's pretty sweet. So before that keyword existed, uh, you'd have to remember to go back to like the base class and update accordingly. Yeah, you would just have to like copy and paste them in here or if you wanted to like remember. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Time saver. Else? Yeah. I'm trying to think what else I have that I can show you. Um, oh, so over here. Let's see. Oh, here's a good one. I notice how I have comments just to remind me of all these I do different that. I do that too. I write demo and big bold letters. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally natural. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so anyways, yeah, this ternary condition, uh, it's, you know, ternary conditions can be great, but sometimes at the end of editing some logic, you realize things could be a bit simpler. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, you know? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I always have, I feel like I always have to go on Stack Overflow and look up what does this mean again? Like what, what part is the else statement? Which part is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, we just want to make things, you know, um, easier to read and um, we just want our code to just be easily read and consumed. So we do have this uh, code fix to simplify conditional expressions. Mm. And that just makes it so oh, important. Yeah. Like, can you believe that oh. they both meant the same thing? Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, you mean I just spent five minutes deciphering this just to find out? Yeah. Like, did work. your brain hurt a little bit? My, my yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's 2 a.m. I'm looking at this code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so those are just some of the latest code fixes and refactorings. And next, I want to show some tooling improvements. This one's actually my favorite one. Uh, so this is, um, there was like tons of excitement from the community about this one. 
And um, so we pretty much, we added IntelliSense inside date time and time span uh, literal strings. So in this piece of code, I'm taking a date time and I'm calling to string on it. And if I start typing uh, a date time string literal, mm, you will notice. This? Yeah. I'm getting I, suggestions. Yeah, these are completion options and explanations as to what, what each of these characters mean. So you can see here, this is what it looks like. So it's pretty, so pretty snazzy. Yeah. And um, while I am talking about, you know, IntelliSense completions and oh, let me missing a quotation mark, um, I do want to point out, you know, um, we also have IntelliSense completion for regular expressions. So I can go ahead and just show you that real quick. Let's see. So here I'm just going to write a regular expression. Mm -hmm. And so Lino. notice how I get, yeah, lo and behold, uh, notice yeah. how I get these completion options and explanations as to what each of these characters mean. Uh, what's really cool too oh. is that I also uh, get a tooltip. So uh, quick info will actually let me know if I'm missing, like I'm missing my closing parentheses. So it's pretty smart. It's really awesome. This seriously would have been so useful to me a couple months ago when I was writing a calendar app and writing date formats everywhere and trying to look up what format I needed to be using. <laughs> yeah, like, and oh my yeah. Goodness. I actually remember that calendar app that you showed right? me. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great good app. Good times, good times. Back in time. five years ago in March. <laughs> I know. it's It feels like forever ago. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so these are just nice inline experiences that we offer instead of having to, you know, go to the browser and learn how all of this works. So. Sweet. Yeah. Let's see. I have another. Uh, Another tooltip. So uh, we've had, you know, change signature for a long time, where you can go ahead and, you know, reorder parameters or remove parameters. Uh, but we just recently added the capability to add a parameter. Mm -hmm. So here I can go ahead and add the type as well as the uh, parameter name. Um, I can also make this required or optional with a default value. And um, I can decide what I want to inject into the call site. And I can also introduce, you know, to do variables. So this will basically put a to do in my code so I can like visit those errors and go through each call site independently and decide what needs to be passed. That's awesome. Yeah, and for um, optional parameters, I can also uh, choose to, um, you know, I can choose to omit the call site completely. So it's pretty cool. And once you select OK, you will see uh, a preview of the new uh, method signature. And you will see uh, that this is the new parameter. So it's pretty awesome. This is like one of our highest requests from, from the community. So we're really excited to get this one out. That's really great. So I especially like the adding the to do's just automatically instead of having to remember where you call this function everywhere. That's pretty nice. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty awesome new feature. Um, let's see. Oh, I have another one real quick too that I want to show. So um, so we added file header support, and um, this allows you to add file headers to existing uh, you know files within a project or a solution using an editor config. Uh, so this is an editor config file. For those of you that don't know, it's a uh, single file that documents all of your code style or code quality options that lives at the root of your repository and can be managed by your regular source control and shared across your entire team. Uh, so you can think of it as a universal way of, encode, of enforcing code style and code quality preferences across your team. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. And so here um, we have this file header template, um, and you would just have to set the value to equal the file header that you would text that you would like to get applied to your uh, C sharp or Visual Basic files. This currently only works for C sharp and Visual Basic. And um, if you go to the first line of your file, you can go ahead and select this file header. So oh, it's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And not only that, I just want to point out a lot of our um, code fixes 
Um, and even and for the file header feature as well, you can really actually apply all of these fixers to your entire document, project, or solution. So you can scope it however you'd like. So if I want, I can add this file header across my entire Everywhere. project. Yeah, and it will open this preview changes window where I can just, you know, select or deselect uh, which you know files I want this to apply to, and you can go ahead and do that. And you can see that it was added. And if I go to other classes, you can see that was added too. So it's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add emojis to all my file headers from here on out too. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the only way to write file headers. Yeah, so. really though. <laughs> Spice it up a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. I mean, it seems like there's a lot you can do in that edit editor config window in, in general, right? So, like, how can people learn more about what they can and can't do in there specifically? Yeah, we uh, well, we have like documentation that I can always point uh, users to. Uh, we also have for you know all the different code style options. Um, you can go to code style. You can just use Control Q search over there, and here you can actually it's a little bit easier to understand mm -hmm. this UI that we have, and mm -hmm. um, you can actually see all the different code style preferences that you want and have it applied to your editor config as well. That's neat. Yeah, and so if you want, you can um, do tabs versus spaces. <laughs> oh boy, yep. <laughs> I don't want to bring anything up. I know there's a lot of controversy there. Um, yeah, and then um, yeah, and so you can just you know enforce these code style and code quality um, options across your team. So if you're like really adamant about tabs, you can just sneak that word in there and then just push your code, and everyone will just have to use tabs. <laughs> That's like the dream of being a manager, right? You get to assert your <laughs> belief of tabs over versus spaces, no matter yeah. what. By asking yeah. editor, editor can pick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, and so we're doing a lot of work with this too. So stay tuned uh, with the editor config. So yeah, it's exciting, exciting stuff happening with that. Yeah, it is. And so we have. Oh yeah, go on. Oh, I was just gonna say. Speaking of exciting things coming, I mean, it feels like. I look away for five minutes and all of a sudden there's like 20 new cool refactoring <laughs> items added. <laughs> so what's coming soon in productivity land? Yeah, okay, let me let me show you. Okay, so let's see. So some new features that are coming. Uh, the first one I can show is, so here we have, um, here, let's see which one should I show first. Um, okay, I can show this one. So there's now a uh, refactoring that introduces the new uh, C sharp nine pattern combinators. So over here, if I just you know place my cursor and select, um, let's see, use pattern matching, it will go ahead and use those pattern matching combinators. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's like a new uh, C sharp nine feature or the pattern matching combinators. So it's really exciting. That's really and cool. Yeah, and uh, another one that we recently just added. So these are all um, coming in 16.8 preview one. So everyone who wants to learn more about it can just check out the release notes as well. And uh, just, yeah, and so uh, this one here. Um, so this is, we now have like a suppression operator warning and code fix, and this helps you easily identify and fix suppression operators that have no effect. So in this case, uh, let's say, in this case, I want to express that something isn't type string. Um, and so this operator here makes sense, but it it's not actually um, checking for that. So I we have a code fix where you can either um, remove the operator completely, um, or if you want to actually check it, you can use the is not. That's if you're checking if it's not a type string. Yeah. That's great. So that's, yeah, so that's like a new one that we just came out with. And let's see, what else do I have here? Uh, we have a, another one where you can remove the in keyword, uh, where the argument should be passed by reference. So that's just also like a quick little fix too. And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, and we have another one. Let's say here I can do it. Um, let's say I want to just go ahead and let's see. Um, okay, let's say I want to just create a 
abstract method. Um, let's see. So over here, you'll just notice that I have an error, and that's because my class isn't abstract. So we have a quick fix to also make a class abstract. And you can see here that Sweet. the I wasn't there before. Was added. No. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, that just seems some, something that would naturally be be there. So I'm glad that's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are uh, some of, yeah, so those are the latest code fixes ring factorings coming to 16.8 preview one. That is very exciting. Like, serious, there's not a bad one in the bunch from what I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> like, all these seem super beneficial to anybody who's just coding away no matter what you're working on, which is the cool part about productivity tools like that. Yeah, it's really awesome. And um, I don't know if we have time, but I can also just show a couple in the Solution Explorer that was recently added that are just yeah. really cool. OK, yeah. Um, so here um, I have a test project. And just for demo purposes, I'm going to delete um, this reference. So I'm referencing my project here. And so, so now I'm not referencing anything. And if I want to go ahead and add a project reference, you know, I would have to go to add and then add the project reference. But we just added the ability to uh, drag and drop the project you'd like to re reference. And voila, notice how wow. this project reference was added. And it was also added underneath the dependencies node within the Solution Explorer. Great. So no yeah. need to worry about syntax, typos, any of that. Yeah, just so you can just drag, drag and drop. Yeah, and um, and another last thing about with the Solution Explorer that I wanted to point out is uh, we added the capability of copying, pasting, and dragging files from File Explorer to Solution Explorer. So instead of having to um, right click and add an existing item, and you know, we you then have to like renavigate to where your path already is. You can now simply drag and drop this file Yay. and it will get copied right to your source. So it's pretty awesome. That is so great. Yeah, it's really cool. Gosh. Are those features available in 16.8 uh, or are they They're already now? available. Yeah, they're out now. Oh, yay. Yeah. How exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. Let's see. Yeah, and I think that's um, all I have today. But yeah, definitely uh, check out the release notes. And um, also, all of our code fixes or refactorings are at ak.ms forward slash refactor code. And so, um, yeah, that's where you can just learn about all these new tips and tricks. And you can be the coolest person on your team that everyone goes to <laughs> like learn right? about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just sit in your office chair like, yeah, so did you know you can now drag and drop into the solution file? I mean, I figured everybody knew, but just in case you didn't, <laughs> here <Yeah>. you go. <laughs> well, yeah. that's really exciting. I'm going to have to make a trip to that website too because I keep missing out on all these wonderful refactorings that I should totally be taking advantage of. As yeah, definitely should time. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for being here, Mika. That was super informative. I feel supercharged in my <laughs> well, experience, <Great>. definitely. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, and uh, yeah, and again, if you want to learn more, check out uh, the website that Mika just mentioned, aka.ms slash, Refactor code. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet, and with that, happy coding. Cool.